Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. You're watching Old Car Auto Guy today. We've got a very special reviews day today. What are we reviewing? Stay tuned, you'll find out. Okay guys, I promised you a very special reviews day and you're not going to be disappointed. Today, we have a very good friend of mine, Jeff Way, who has brought his 1987 Toyota Land Cruiser LJ71. Take a look at this. folks so we are now entering into uncharted territories with this channel because I've never seen one of these things before I've never driven a right-hand vehicle but I've got my buddy Jeff who's here to tell us as much as he knows about it because he doesn't know a whole lot other, either other than the fact that it is Toyota it's all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive and it does have the turbo diesel engine so Jeff tell me a little bit about uh, why you bought this and what your intended purpose is. We lucked out, we were looking for a vehicle to send to Zimbabwe, Africa, where my family works at Eden Children's Village. Orphanage houses 140 kids, and uh, I'm a carpenter, jack of all trades. My wife's a nurse, she works at the clinic there, and we needed a family vehicle. And being Zimbabwe, it's right hand drive. We're out in the bush, we're in the middle of nowhere. The ro roads are rough as rough. This vehicle is perfect for our family of four. We can't wait to get it there. It's gonna go in our big blue box, along with tools and household stuff and just everything we can put. And we can't wait to be hitting the back roads of Zimbabwe in our Land Cruiser. So basically the idea of having this Land Cruiser for, for Jeff and his family is basic transportation and being all the way in Africa there's only really one way to get it there and that is this big blue container and as Jeff alluded to what we're trying to do or what he's trying to do with this particular project which is basically it's a mission trip or, or a mission lifestyle for you guys because you're, you're, you're basically moving your whole family to Africa is they're trying to raise money to be able to go over there, establish a business, yep. and basically lay the groundwork for being able to stay in Zimbabwe for an extended period of time without having to deal with immigration every, what was it, every 30, 30 days, days? Every 30 days. So yeah. what we're trying to do is, or they're trying to raise some money, raise some supplies to fill the container, and in that container will go this Toyota Land Cruiser, and ship it over to Zimbabwe. And when the time comes that it arrives, then they'll be able to make it over there, do what they have to do to make things right, and hopefully get some sort of semi-permanent residency while you're there. That's right. So guys, if you really feel it in your heart to want to donate to this worthy cause, I'm gonna put Jeff's uh, website address down in the comment section below. Go down, check it out, and if you feel the need to donate, please go ahead and do so. So right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the Land Cruiser and we're gonna check out some of the quirky little items that it has. So Jeff, one of the first things that I notice that everybody notices when they see this thing coming down the road 
is the very subtle indication of the turbo wagon on both <laughs> sides of the vehicle. Yeah, that's right. It is. Uh, it stands out. It does. It, and the other thing, of course, me being a car guy, I look at this thing and I think, okay, it's kind of your, you know, SUV type deal, but it's two door. So, okay, so it's this turbo wagon on the side. We know it's a Toyota Land Cruiser because it says it on the front fender. But it's a two door for a family of four, so it may have its challenges of getting people in and out of the back seat. Yeah. And cargo capacity, well, let's just say it's somewhat limited. Yeah. But, I mean, the vehicle itself is unique. One of the reasons why I wanted to do this review on the Land Cruiser was because you guys are you guys know that I'm all about the odd style vehicles. I'm you know not run of the mill. Yes, I like Corvettes and Mustangs and Camaros and all that stuff, but you see them going all the time. And one of the things you just don't see, especially here in St. <laughs> Stephen, New Brunswick, is a right-hand drive vehicle, let alone a two-door Toyota Land Cruiser. So, uh, Jeff, tell me some of the things that you had to do uh, when you bought this thing to basically get it ready to drive in New Brunswick. Well, thankfully it was already licensed and safety. Uh, the guy I bought it from was up in Perth Andover and he bought it as a crash around in the bush off-roader, but when he really looked at it, he realized he just it was just too good a vehicle to do that. So he decided to uh, sell it. And uh, so he, I don't know how long he had it for. Uh, what we did to it, the guys over at VIP in Callis, they generously donated their time and materials they flushed all the fluids gave it a good thorough tune-up I've uh, crawled underneath it and scraped and painted the frame um, really I haven't done much to it it only only has 197,000 kilometers on it so being a diesel this thing's just getting broken in uh, it's in fantastic shape for the age really it, it is and that's another thing that I wanted to point out was this vehicle is a 1987 yeah. and my math's not great but that's 31 years yeah so yeah. you you take a look at this and you, you go around sure the the decals on the side are faded yeah. the, the clear coat is is faded and wearing off but the interior looks like it's brand new yeah. uh you know and and the thing doesn't have really a speck of rust on it so I, i'm just going to take you around one more time and show you uh some of these uh some, some of the features on this vehicle that you may not have caught in the intro video. So let's take a look. So obviously being a right-hand drive, your windshield wipers, according to us, swipe backwards. You'll notice that when they come up, they come up from this way and, and hit the driver's side window for better clearance, obviously. Now, because this is an off-road bush vehicle, if you're driving at night and you got muddy headlights, well, you're gonna wanna wash your headlights. So that's what these things here are for, and they are gonna come in handy, I bet, on the back roads of Zimbabwe. I can't get over the shape that that chrome bumper is in now. I'm not sure if that would be original or not, but if that's 31 years old, I'm quite sure. my soul. Well, perhaps not. There's, a, there's obviously a thing here, but um, all indications are is that it's it's original. It matches the step on the front. Oh, well, that's so, cool. It's got a kind of a built-in step right yeah, there so that you can step. reach in. Yeah. I mean, it's a Toyota, so you're very rarely going to have to work on it, but regular maintenance. Yeah. And who knows, being an Africa, you may actually want to climb up on top of the vehicle. Maybe you're escaping a lion or something. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never know, right? Yeah. It's, uh, Just some of the things you don't have to worry about here in Charlotte County, that's right? That's true. And we will be putting a roof rack on it. You mentioned car lack of cargo space. We need to kit it out for Africa with a roof rack and a ladder on the back for sure. Yeah, so as we move around to this side, as Jeff pointed out, there is a small crinkle in the fender right here. So it looks like something's bumped into it at one point in time. So is that an indicator of this being a new bumper? We don't know, but this is the worst part on the whole vehicle, other than the clear coat peeling off. <clears throat> we come around, we do have some chrome steps on the side, as well as the chrome on the, uh, on the rear view mirrors. Now, Jeff, you had mentioned, and I see it back here on the back of the vehicle, that this is an SX5, and I just assume that's probably some sort of a sub-model to the vehicle, which probably gives us some of the options like the chrome yeah. and stuff like that. It's the chrome, it's the trim kit inside, the different, you know, a gray instead of beige, that sort of thing. Yep. It was like a limited edition. And you'll notice in the back, the, the rear windows, they do, well, you probably can't see it on camera, but they've got rear window defrosters built in. 
and uh, two different sized doors. So over here on this side, you've got where your spare is, and then on this side is uh, basically how you gain access. So as I alluded to before, as we peeked in the back window, you've only got about, what, there's only about 12 inches there maybe? Yeah, maybe. And as the seats recline back a little bit, you lose a little bit less up top. But uh, these seats will fold forward. And just like that, you literally double, maybe even triple your cargo space in the back. And if it's uh, like any other form of utility vehicle, those seats probably will remove all the way. I haven't tried that At yet. the very least, they probably uh, will they, with a couple of might. bolts and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, probably right there yep. and there. Take them right out. So what we have is what looks to be possibly some sort of an emergency kit. Yeah. Being that it was from Japan originally, everything is in Japanese, so... <laughs> Even the owner's manual. And these are actually, this is fantastic. It's in Japanese, I don't know what it says. In Zimbabwe, these are required. Every vehicle has to have a triangle, a high visibility vest, and a fire extinguisher. Wow. So we've got one out of three so far. There you go. So guys, if you're in the local area and you're looking to help out Jeff, we're looking for some high visibility vests and a fire extinguisher. <laughs> oh, that's right. Speaking of fire. Pardon the interruption. Now that we've been around this thing a few times, I think it's time that Jason gets his feet wet on a right-hand drive. Absolutely. Let's do it. So the first thing I want to notice is that all your pedals are in the same location as they would be if they're on the uh, correct side. <laughs> the left side. The left side. Oh my goodness. So as we get in, we do have to take note that it looks like the turn signals are over on the right hand side of the steering wheel and the wipers are on the left, which would be the opposite of a left hand drive vehicle. We come over to the inside and it looks like this uh, vehicle did have or quite possibly still has air conditioning. It does. Yeah. It does and it works. We have to change it over to the system that they use in Africa. Okay. And then we've got some uh, Alpine stereo there which is probably not 1987. No. And uh, an altimeter. Right yeah. now that's showing pretty close to zero. And have you had it any place where you see it move? Haven't been further than St. John. And yes, there you're sea level be anyway. at sea level, right? Yeah. So. All right, so it is a five speed. Five speed shifts the same way as it would on a regular vehicle. So that's gonna be a little bit of a getting used to. Yeah. I can see out there. Visibility is great in this thing. The windows are huge. Power windows and locks. Yeah. Power lumbar seat in case it's not very comfortable in your lower <laughs> back, Jason. Yeah, when you're off-roading in the yes, back. Yes, that's the right. It's good to be. That's right. It's a diesel. That's right. Definitely. It started right up, though. I didn't even wait for the glow plugs. It does. The glow plugs are there, but it's been running. So, As always, safety first. So for those of you who watch the channel on a regular basis, you know that I can drive just about anything. This is a five-speed manual, uh, albeit right-hand drive. I shouldn't have any issues with it, but here goes. Parking brakes on. Parking brakes on. Thanks for reminding me. Yep. Okay, we've literally rolled maybe 50 feet and it's already weird. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember to stay close to the white line. Oh, over here, so down is to the right. Here we go. So far, so good. I feel like I'm in the middle of the road. <laughs> you get used to the stairs. High school kids give us thumbs up and <laughs> they see us. So a couple of things that I usually do when I'm out on a test drive is I'll test the cruise control, make sure that it works. And I'll do what's called a hard brake. I'm not gonna do that to you today. Okay. And then we'll do a quick acceleration so that basically people know that, you know, it stops quick, 
accelerates quick or whatever, this is a turbo diesel. If I had to guess, back in 1987, you'd be lucky if this thing had 130 horsepower probably. So I will look that up, we're about to run a red light, but hey, we're in a right-hand drive, who cares? <laughs> this is tough to get, get used to. <laughs> Driving a vehicle, literally almost sitting on the white line. Yeah. So being in kilometers an hour, right now, this thing is about, we're doing about 85, 90. And uh, other than maybe a little bit of a buzz in the rattle in the dash, I mean, the thing seems like it's pretty tight. Again, we're talking about a 31-year-old vehicle here. Mm. We had, friend, we had friends in Zimbabwe who had a Land Cruiser. They put a million kilometers on it. Wow. They, uh, it was a wagon. They converted it into a uh, backy or a pickup truck. Yeah. And uh, so we don't even have 200,000 on it yet. There's so many more kilometers to go. Well, and there's something to be said for a Toyota anyway. Yeah. Uh, as you know, my wife drives a Toyota van. And everybody that watches this channel knows that it's got 630,000 kilometers on a gas engine. Whoops, wrong one. There's Kate. Ah, oh, and this is no longer a dirt road. No, they, uh, they did a lot of work up here. Yeah. So no lines on this road, does that mean I got the whole thing or what? Take it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is definitely not a power machine. No. So for all you young fellows out there that watch this channel and you're thinking of something unique to go out and buy to hot rod around in, yeah, this probably isn't it. <laughs> so another thing that I normally do uh, as part of this review on our vehicles is I will always go and make sure that my viewers know what the fuel economy is or the average fuel rating is on a car. Probably not going to find it on this one, being a diesel and, and being 31 years old. Yeah. But one thing I can do for you guys is I will do a little bit of research and find out what the actual horsepower and torque ratings are on this rig and uh, I'll post them right here for you so that you guys can see what kind of uh, lack of power I'm really talking about here now. Going through Tim Hortons drive through is a bit of a nuisance. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> going We're going backwards. through customs. It's good to have a passenger, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we get a, we get a, lots of questions when we go through customs. Why we have it, etc. It's well, a good conversation you, starter. What a, what a great mail run vehicle. Yeah. If People were, ask us if, we're, if if I'm a mailman. Well, here we are, right back where we started. Well done. Well, that didn't stall at once. Didn't stall it. Nothing. We're, we're both still here. Yeah. <laughs> well, we didn't hit any off-road, but no. uh, I haven't got the nerve up to do that yet. There's a button on top. Oh, right there. There you go. Well, what do you think? I like it. You even got headroom. Yeah. That's again. That's another thing that I generally will point out is is the comfort. Being six foot two, the people think you know there's not a lot of vehicles you can get into, even the small ones. Well. My only complaint here mm -hmm. is the like, when you're driving down the road, you got three you got three pedals down there, mm -hmm. and when you take your foot off that clutch, there's no dead pedal on that left hand side, so you got no place to put your foot but to haul it up. So, mm -hmm. I would guess that a, a long distance drive would be a little bit more of a challenge. But as far as actual comfort in the seat, nothing yeah. wrong here. No. no. Well, there you have it, guys. There is my review on a 1987 Toyota Land Cruiser. LJ71. I got it right twice in a row. Wow. So Jeff, thank you very much thank you. for letting thank us you do guys. a review on your uh, Toyota Land Cruiser. Awesome. And guys, don't forget, I'm going to put the link in the description box below for you guys to go take a look at their website so that you know what these guys are up to over in Zimbabwe. Coincidentally, if you didn't catch it yet, the last name is Way, Jeff Way, and they are in Zimbabwe. Coincidental? I think not. I think there was a greater plan there. Anyways, guys, as always, focus on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you guys. God bless. We will see you in the next upload.